Thank you, everyone, for joining this conversation. We have uh, with us the Indus Action team. We have Rajita and Neenu from the Indus Action team, and they'll be walking us through um, the session, which is on women participation in the workforce and the necessity during a crisis. Um, but just before I hand it over to the Indus Action team, I'd just like to go over a few ground rules. We are recording this session for the purpose of documentation and dissemination, so please do let us know by chat if you would not like to be recorded or quoted. Um, in the interest of active consent seeking, we will be removing all AI note taking assistance during the call and we'll keep an eye out for that as we move as we move move forward. So just be mindful that if you do, if you are associated with an AI note taker, we will be removing them uh, to save bandwidth on the call. Please do turn off your camera and keep yourself on mute when you're not speaking. But of course, if you'd like to make a comment or ask a question, feel free to turn on um, your video to do so. And of course, unmute yourself. Uh, many of us in the room are comfortable speaking in Hindi or English, so please feel free to kind of ask your questions or comments in either, either of those two languages, and we'd be more than willing to help out in case anyone needs a little bit of assistance with translation. Uh, please use the chat box to leave your comments and questions, and it would be great if you could introduce yourself and your organization along with it. I would just implore you to not um, sort of uh, interrupt the speakers while they're going through their presentation. We do always kind of keep enough time for discussions and questions uh, towards the end of the session. But of course, if there's something really pressing you'd like to ask at that moment, feel free to use the chat box. And of course, please do help keep us on time. These sessions are parallelly programmed. So as you can see, the previous session ran a little bit over. So we're starting this one about 10 minutes late and we're cognizant that this one kind of coincides with lunch. So we'd like to maybe, uh, we'd like for everyone to maybe just keep it within the hour mark. Uh, but before I hand it over to the Indus Action team, I'd just like to do a little bit of a quick background and introduce uh, Cornet itself. Uh, I see there are quite a few new faces around here. Uh, so the COVID-19 research community is an effort to build a community of practice to foster exchange and collaboration among research organizations, gathering relevant in, uh, information and projects about COVID-19 pandemic in India. Uh, the Cornet Secretariat is being anchored by Quicksan and is being supported by the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. I am Nithya and I work with Quicksan as a design researcher. And that's kind of what we've been doing for the last uh, almost about a year. So we've been facilitating and kind of anchoring this uh, this community of practice called Cornet. And over the past year, we have managed to have about 60 member organizations uh, working across 23 geographies. We have over 200 individual uh, research uh, representatives or individuals on the Slack workspace. We have about 80 submitted research projects onto the web platform and feel free to check it out on www.cornet.in in case you want to have a browse and see what kind of projects have been uploaded. Uh, so far, we've had 19 coffee hour sessions and three ethics dialogues, which is based in an attempt for us to come together as a community and share learnings and have interesting discussions about things going on in the research world, as well as um, regarding COVID-19 in India. And we thought that after about a year, the conference would be a great place for us to come together and regroup and just engage with stakeholders and discuss learnings and experiences for future directions. And unfortunately, it seems to be coming at a very uh, appropriate time where we seem to be going back into the, into almost like a second wave. It seems to be more deadly. So it seems that this would be a good time to come back and see what have we actually learned over the last year and what are things we can take forward to be better prepared as we as we move ahead. Um, a quick look at the agenda, where at the five minute introductions, after which I'll hand it over to the Indus Action team, uh, where they'll go over their presentation for about 20 to 25 minutes. And then as promised, we have about uh, 30 minutes for discussions and questions. Uh, but before I hand it over to Rajita and Mino, I thought maybe a quick introduction would be appropriate. Uh, so Rajita is a public policy professional who has previously worked on critical action research and action consulting projects for the government departments, for state government departments. At in this action, she leads initiatives in Karnataka and Andhra Pradesh. Uh, Meenu is a public policy uh, graduate from National Law School of India. Uh, after starting her career as a political, political consultant, Meenu started working with Indus Action in 2018. Her area of interest has been in the space of right to food, early childcare and education, and livelihoods. Uh, so with that, uh, Rajitha, Meenu, over to you. Thank you for the introduction. So um, my name is Rajita. I'll uh, quickly start with setting the context of the research. So uh, Meenu and I uh, lo look at uh, initiatives for Andhra Pradesh and Karnataka in this action. And um, around last year, um, in addition to a rapid response uh, relief uh, for COVID, we also undertook a study in um, the Bag in a Bagalkot district of Karnataka, which is a primarily out migration uh, district uh, here. Uh, what we did was uh, we sort of uh, partnered with a grassroots organization to facilitate uh, one awareness drive for migrants who were returning and also to facilitate registrations for uh, NREGA. Now, with some context, uh, 
uh, through this exercise uh, and uh, we had some issues that you know the migrants had sort of um, shared with us uh, during our discussions and uh, we went back to the commissioner of NREG Karnataka to identify you know, if there are some ways in which we can um, double click on some of these problem statements and support the government in uh, actually designing the policy interventions. Uh, so that's the context of how we got this going. Uh, one of the, uh, you know, uh, one of the major issues uh, that, uh, you know, even during our discussions and also uh, with the grassroots organization and migrants and as well as the department was uh, awareness and in spe in specifically uh, awareness um, of the scheme uh, with the women uh, groups. Uh, so if you quickly look at this uh, slide here, uh, you will notice that uh, Karnataka, when compared to all other southern states and also and India uh, at an average level, um, uh, has a much lower share of uh, women uh, participation. Uh, Kerala, of course, uh, has a very high share uh, with 90%, uh, Tamil Nadu, Telangana, Karnataka, Goa, all of these states have much higher shares of uh, women participation. And uh, one thing to also note is that uh, although there has been a year-on-year -year, uh, growth, a very incremental growth in the uh, share of women, it has not been substantial and it has you know, been in the same range um, throughout. So if we were to look at the next graph uh, in the slide, in the subsequent slide. Yeah, uh, so this is also an interesting graph for us to know, which also sets the context of why the study becomes important in the Karnataka milieu is um, if you were to contrast the women participation rate with the rural participation rate, uh, you will notice that the gap um, for all other southern states barring Karnataka is quite high. So what this simply means is that uh, women on average uh, in all other states and even India for that matter, prefer to work in NREGE over uh, say, the external labor market. Uh, of course, there might be uh, uh, many reasons uh, some that are facilitating uh, through the NREG uh, side of implementation and some just characteristics of how the labor market is designed. Right. Um, so uh, that was just to set the overall sort of uh, context of what we're dealing with. Now, if you were to double click on how uh, the districts perform, how the districts perform um, within Karnataka, you will note that um, uh, on the graph to my uh, left, uh, uh, the share of women varies anywhere between 40% uh, in um, Vijayapura Dharva to 60% in Udupi. And this has been the case uh, across the years, starting 2017. And graph to the right will show you uh, how how the district, uh, the change in the share of women participation over the years within the districts. Um, the districts on the top you would see have uh, highest sort of uh, positive change. Um, Tharwar, I'm sorry, Chamrajnagar, Yadgir, Belgali have shown like uh, an increased percentage points in terms of participation. And districts at the bottom, if you see Dakshin Kannada, Kodumu, Shivamoga, have seen a sort of fall in terms of percentage points of overall uh, share of women participation. So. Um, so we wanted to understand this problem statement further and we wanted to facilitate um, our knowledge and build that sort of uh, insights on what is it that women can do, um, what we can do uh, in terms of building an ecosystem and in terms of policy interventions to promote more women participation. Uh, so what we did was uh, we worked with the, uh, with the department and uh, we designed a qualitative research study. Um, where uh, we mapped all the districts in Karnataka on a two by two matrix. One was to uh, map uh, their overall NREG performance and the other was to see the share of women. Now, all of these uh, districts, of course, were in a high, 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 low, 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 high. Uh, but what we also observed was all districts that had at least an average uh, performance or higher uh, in terms of uh, overall NREG performance also saw equally high share of women participation. So what this meant was uh, we did not find a District where the overall, where you know the total number of person days was very high, but there was uh, there was no adequate uh, or appropriate um, share of women. Um, so we selected Belgavi and Raichur uh, in the top quadrant, the top left, uh, top right quadrant, uh, Chamrajnagar, um, which has seen like a substantial jump in the overall share of women participation, and Dharwad, which also sees low overall demand and also low demand for women. Now within these districts. Uh, we chose uh, one GP uh, that was uh, one of the higher performing GPs and one low performing GPs. Uh, and that's how we arrived at uh, the study canvas itself. We spoke to around 200 women, uh, 213 women uh, across these four districts, across these four eight, uh, eight GPs in the form of FGDs and in-depth interviews. We also looked at the data that was available on the public uh, MIS uh, portal and uh, the administrative data with the Panchayat Office and the NREG uh, Commissionerate uh, to identify the GP profile, et cetera. So um, this was how we went about it, uh, Minu, um, just before Minu comes in. So um, uh, so basically the women that we spoke to primarily, if I, if I were to just make up like a 
caricature of them primarily were from the 26 to 40 years age bracket. Uh, they were mostly OBCs. Uh, yeah, they were primarily between 26 to 40. Um, the average size, average uh, family size was between uh, four to five. Um, most of uh, the women uh, claim to be mar claim to have marginal land holding and uh, around 50% of them were illiterate. Uh, so this is the composition of the, 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 uh, the overall sort of uh, women group that we uh, worked with uh, or we, uh, you know, sort of spoke to. Yeah. Uh, thanks, Prajita, for uh, taking us through the methodology and how we've been going about uh, our research so far. Now, I think uh, already touched upon by my colleague Rajita, the, there were three main drivers or objectives of our study. One was, of course, to understand uh, the drivers that will promote women's participation. Uh, second is to understand what are the barriers which affect uh, participation of women? What are some of the hurdles uh, which we need to perhaps look into? And finally, uh, I think like in our sampling also we mentioned, we've been choosing both high performing as well as low performing GPs to understand why is there a difference uh, between these GPs? Uh, so those were three main, main objectives of our study. And we're just in the preliminary stage and we've got some observations uh, which we would be sharing in the course of the presentation. In terms of, I think, like I mentioned, the two main objectives of the study one of course has been to understand the drivers and the other one has been to understand the barriers now on both these aspects uh, there are a plethora of reasons right from scheme related factors to implementation related factors uh, the social economic profile of uh, the women workforce as well as external factors which affect uh, uh, which affect uh, the uh, the rate of participation in Karnataka uh, now to start with the drivers on my left side I think the most important point of course has been the assured employment for 100 to 150 days uh, this has especially been a welcome step in areas which are drought prone or uh, you know flood uh, or flood disaster or, or areas which have met with flood disasters. Uh, now we've seen this being a very important factor in increasing the participation of women in Belgravi district. But that said, I think there is still a long way to go to ensure that women actually are able to uh, uh, get work for almost 100 to 150 days. Of course, their participation or the number of work days has gone up, uh, but it's not as expected uh, so far. Uh, but it's definitely been a step in the right direction. Uh, secondly, has been flexible working hours. Uh, now, I think this is very important from a women's perspective. Uh, one of the things that we noticed in our interaction with uh, uh, women uh, through both in-depth interviews as well as the focus group, uh, focus group discussions across the four districts uh, has been that uh, the hours of work have been flexible. Just to tell you the difference, for example, in Raichur and Dharwad, women generally prefer uh, to start their day early. So they start their work somewhere around 7 a.m. to 8 a.m. and they go on to work till the lunch hour, almost till 1 p.m. or so. And then they get back to their uh, families. Uh, but if you contrast it to the other two districts, we see it being playing out differently. So uh, there women start their work around uh, 10.30, 11 a.m. Uh, 10.30 a.m. to 11 a.m. and they go on to work till almost 4 to 5 p.m. and also take a lunch hour in between uh, around 1, uh, 1 p.m. to 2 p.m. Now, we also observe that a lot of these women actually go back to their homes to spend time with their children and also to cook lunch, etc. So that flexibility has been something which uh, has been quite helpful. And that's not something which uh, they get when they are, say, uh, working uh, in the land of the landlords or in or other work in the open market. So that's been something uh, which has been a driver in uh, pushing uh, uh, more women towards MGNREG. Now, awareness creation. Uh, this is something which we will be touching upon uh, quite a bit uh, through the course of this presentation. Now, awareness continues to be a major problem. Uh, one is, of course, awareness about the scheme, the number of days of work, uh, the wages, etc. Uh, but also awareness about the specific provisions or the entitlements that women are entitled to or beneficiaries are entitled to uh, within the scheme. Uh, now, several gram panchayats have been making concerted effort to make sure uh, that women, uh, you know, that more awareness is created about the scheme within their uh, area. Now, a few of the examples and some interesting ones were one which we saw in Rainala GP. Uh, we saw that uh, actually mic announcements were being made from lane to lane to get uh, more people uh, to join MGNRE GA. In Ibrahimpur GP, which is again one of the low performing uh, 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 panchayats, uh, they adopted a different model wherein you know they uh, chose like a temple and the temple mic system uh, to reach out to more people and let them know about work. So a lot of interesting models have been developed uh, within Gram Panchayats to make sure that awareness is created about the scheme. The fourth one being group work for women and convergence with CBO. Now, this is a very important point uh, with respect to MG and REG. Uh, now, I'll tell you why this is important, right? So in one of the panchayats that we were surveying in LK Dodi in Raichur, we found that the participation of women there is high. And while surveying, why is that the reason? We found that the uh, convergence with the community-based organization like a Grapus has been much more. 
Now, this has been important because they have been able to get women within the SSG network uh, to work in MG and REG. They've, they've been able to, uh, through their participation with Gram Sabhas, uh, to understand what are the areas uh, within panchayats that women can work, etc. So I think that's been a very important factor. Convergence with community-based organizations like RAPUs or NRLM, SRLM, etc. has been very important and uh, proved to be a crucial factor, in fact, going forward as well, uh, to increase the rates of women participation, especially so in gram panchayats, which are uh, which have quite low rates right now. Individual bank accounts and payment without delay. Now, regarding wages across all the four districts that we uh, uh, we were doing our research, we found that women respond uh, women responded saying that they have been receiving their payments on time, mostly within 15 days after the completion of work. Uh, in fact, in few of the GPs like Shivpura GP of Gundel Pet, Taluk of Chamraj Nagar, or Benikanahalli GP of Belgavi, uh, they've been uh, telling us that they have been receiving weekly payments. So this has been interesting. Uh, the payment has been credited on time to their individual bank accounts. Now, earlier, uh, there was a system of having joint bank accounts. So what that meant was women mostly didn't know what was the amount which was getting credited into their account because it was mostly men who were using the account and it would not really reach the women. But with the uh, uh, with uh, the provision of having individual bank accounts being linked to Aadhaar, what we saw that women have been able to have more autonomy in terms of how those funds have to be utilized. Uh, and we noticed that most of it has been going and meeting the household expenses of the family, uh, or meeting the education expenses of the children, and also to, uh, as a, a part of it also goes in meeting the thrift within the SDG network, uh, as they call Sangha uh, in, uh, uh, in the villages. So I think that's been an interesting uh, bit which has been happening. Uh, another driver has been the wage parity between women and men. Now, one of the things that we observed across all the women who uh, were reached out to through our uh, research has been that everyone knew that the wage rate in Karnataka is 275 rupees per day. And they also knew that the wage rates of both uh, men and the women are equal. Now, they were happy about the fact that women are able to gather more wages uh, through NG and REG than they would do by working being by being part of a local agricultural labor. So I think on an average, uh, based on a calculation across the four districts, the average uh, wage rate across the four districts is close to 100 to 120 rupees, uh, sorry, 120 to 200 rupees uh, across uh, across the district. So that way, if you look at it, women are able to gather uh, much more uh, uh, through their work in uh, MG and REG. And finally, uh, some uh, you know provisions such as drinking water at work. Now this is very interesting. Of course, one of the provisions is that at the work site, the gram panchayat has to make sure that uh, you know the water is provided for. Uh, but we saw different systems at work. For example, uh, in two GPs of Belgavi and Raina of the Arwad district, uh, women said that they have been carrying their own water bottles from their home. Uh, but in the other GPs uh, that was uh, that were part of the research, we saw uh, we saw that either the maids were getting the water. That is the uh, maids were getting water to the work site or a lot of time one woman in the group was assigned to go fetch water from the nearest water source and then distributing it uh, uh, distributing to other women workers so that way i think uh, drinking water uh, was something that they were able to uh, uh, you know uh, access now moving on uh, to the barriers bit of it now i think uh, very interesting points uh, one is of course the cycle of work being not continuous i think this is something which has to be worked on uh, uh, going forward in terms of how uh, you know, the work days are spread across the calendar year. Now, what happens is getting work in installments gets very tough for people who are coming from, uh, you know, uh, poor families and especially so for women. So like I mentioned, uh, the earnings from MG and REGA is going uh, to meet the household expense or the educational needs of the children, etc. So when these uh, work is not cyclical, a lot of times these expenses take a hit. So then uh, that is when uh, women uh, go uh, and access the other opportunities which are available. We saw this play, playing out in Bumanaguda GP in Raichur or Shivpura GP in Chamrajnagar. Uh, also, I think, uh, you know, we saw that it's very important how you channel work because in the harvest season, they tend to earn more. Uh, one of the examples that I'll be sharing in a bit, you can actually see when they go through the harvest season, they're able to gather almost 800 to 1,000 rupees a day. So in that point of time, uh, the accessibility for MG and REGA continues to be very low. But that said, I think one of the primary observations has been after COVID, after the pandemic, uh, the participation has been more uh, in MG and REGA, even for women. Uh, one, of course, is because of the reverse migration. And uh, uh, the other has been that they a more awareness, like I mentioned, has been created at the Gram Panchayat level. So that way, post the pandemic, things have been a little different from what it was earlier. The second barrier being lack of awareness about the various provisions of the scheme. Uh, now, 
like I mentioned, one is, of course, awareness about the scheme. Second is with respect to the various provisions of the scheme. Uh, now, for example, one of the important provisions of the scheme is that women can access uh, unemployment allowance if they are not provided uh, work within 15 days of the submission of form. Uh, now, we saw, for example, in Aj uh, Ajamgere village of LK Dodi GP, uh, that women had applied for work. It's, it was almost 20 days and they were not getting work, nor were they given unemployment allowance. Now, women were not aware that they are entitled to a monetary compensation or an unemployment allowance uh, when work is not provided within 15 days. Uh, similarly, you know, uh, there are other provisions such as transportation charges. Now, in few of the GPs, uh, we found that the work sites are almost seven to eight kilometers away from the houses of uh, houses of uh, the workers. Now, in these cases, they have to pull in money, take an auto, and then go to the work site. So they were not aware that they are also entitled to a travel allowance from the Gram Panchayat. Similarly, with respect to uh, you know the sharpening of the tools. Uh, now, there is a provision that rupees ten per day has to be given to sharpen the tools. Uh, but these are like the provisions. I, I mean, I'm just giving you like three broad examples. But what I'm trying to say is that. Uh, women are not, uh, you know, aware of the lot of specific provisions within uh, the scheme. The third, uh, another important one is the number of women maids being low. And I think we saw this playing out in across the four districts. Of course, few uh, villages did have women maids, uh, but then in majority of the cases, the women maids were really low. Now, this is really important. Uh, like I mentioned in the case of LK Dudi, uh, where uh, the participation of women was high because of the presence of a community-based organization like Grafus, and we also found that it was a woman made. So that really amplified the participation of women. Uh, so what we feel is that uh, women needs being low is one of the aspects uh, which might be curtailing uh, you know, the participation of women in the uh, workforce uh, of MG and RGA. Now, one is with respect to uh, the number of women mates being low, but even with the existing mates, irrespective of the gender, we found that mates are not trained enough. They are not aware of what their roles and responsibilities are uh, in terms of creating more awareness about the scheme uh, or reaching out to beneficiaries, telling them about the number of days, et cetera, which is available for women to work. So I think one is, of course, uh, the need for more women made. Secondly, uh, the lack of training uh, was something which was uh, starkly visible in all the districts that we were surveying. Uh, lack of participation of women in Gram Sabhas. I think all of us know that Gram Sabhas play an important role uh, in deciding the nature of work or the kind of projects that Gram Panchayat takes up for the financial year. Uh, now, one of the things that we found was uh, the participation of women in Gram Sabhas was abysmally low across all the districts. Uh, like barring a few, uh, you know, exceptions like LK Dori, which I mentioned was because of the CBO convergence. Uh, so that's something uh, which uh, which is of uh, major concern. And finally, lack of facilities like crash or first aid uh, facilities at the work site. Now, along with, like I mentioned about various provisions, like specific provisions like crash, etc. Women can bring their children to the work site, but most of them first to start with were not uh, aware that they could do that. Uh, secondly, they feel that there's no shade, et cetera, which young children can be brought and there's no caretaker, et cetera, to take care of the children. So that being a concern. Secondly, first aid facilities uh, was not available in most of the work sites that we visited. Uh, and they have to either access the nearest PFCs or uh, take medical help on their own. Uh, so I think those are some of the major observations in terms of the driver, uh, drivers and the barriers uh, that we found across the GPs. Right. Uh, to the paucity of time, what I'll do is uh, we we have, uh, you know, the testimonies or excerpts from several interviews that we've had with uh, uh, people who are working in the engineering, specifically women. Uh, we've taken two uh, broad examples or two broad testimonies that we've had. Uh, so I'm going to be sharing about two women. One is Ms. Manjula and the other one is Ms. Rupa. Manjula is someone who hails from Ibrahimpur GP of Dharwar district. She's 28 years old, uh, someone who couldn't study much, belongs to the OBC community. Both she and her husband got the job card almost five years back, uh, but they worked in MG and REGA only for almost 25 days last year. Now, when we asked her why wasn't she uh, working this year as well, she mentioned that they have been working in the harvest site, you know, of cotton and chilies, and they're able to almost gather rupees 800 to 1000 a day. So they prefer to take up MG and REGA work when it's an off season and when there is nothing else available in the market. Uh, because you could notice the stark difference in the wage rates, especially uh, during the season of uh, during the agriculture season. Uh, so the second uh, second example is uh, uh, from Rupa, someone who studied till the seventh grade, uh, again coming from the OBC community, and also happens to be landless. Now uh, she also works as a, a mate, uh, a mate at the work site. Her major role is in terms of taking attendance, uh, providing drinking water, making arrangement of shamiana, etc., at the work site. Uh, now, last year, she managed to get almost 14 days of work. Now, 
one of the interesting aspects that she shared with us was earlier she had a joint account with her husband a lot of times what happens is that she never knew about the amount which is being credited to her account uh, so uh, lately with uh, you know uh, the need for an individual account being man made mandatory and that being linked to her other she is now able to access her own funds and able to spend it the way at least to a certain extent that she wants uh the family also happens to go through a critical time has both uh, her husband and mother in law are not keeping well so she has been taking care of the expenses of the house uh so and that's been done majorly through uh, the wages that she's been earning through mgnrg and interestingly she also happens uh, to be a uh, part of uh, nrlm right uh now the most important bit of uh, what are some of the policy suggestions or uh, you know from uh, the study that we have done so far uh, like i mentioned uh, where we are at a very preliminary stage we just finished our study we just uh, consolidating our learnings now but based on our uh, you know understanding so far these are some of the points that uh, we found uh, to be important especially to increase uh, the participation of uh, women uh, in mgnrg in karnataka because like how rajita mentioned uh, not just in south india the if you compare it to the other parts of the country the participation of women continues to be quite low uh, uh, in the state so one is of course awareness uh, i think i mentioned uh, in the previous slide about how there has been a concerted effort from gram panchayats to slowly create more awareness about the scheme but this has to be taken up several notches higher now one of the concern of course is that the limited involvement of women in gram sabha so gram sabha still continues to be a, a male dominated space with the participation of women being extremely low uh, so one of the suggestions that we could perhaps look at of course is to increase their participation try bringing in more women but also if we can look at something like conducting a mahila gram sabhas where they can be open discussions about what kind of work can be taken up in the particular panchayat so what are the challenges that uh, Uh, the women seem to be facing etc uh, so that is an important aspect which could be taken up convergence with cbos uh, again an important bit which i took up in the last slide this is really important right uh, in lk dodi for example in one of the gps that we worked in the participation of women was found to be higher because of uh, the presence of grapus a sg network now we've also found this to be important in set from several other states like kerala Uh, for example in kerala uh, the sg network a popularly known as kudumbashree in the state has been integrated at the gram panchayat level uh, and is uh, and is in charge of implementation of mg nrg in the panchayats now this has been a landmark move and was found to drastically increase the participation of women that's how we see that almost 90% of workforce mg nrg workforce in the state is that is from women right uh, so that is something uh, uh, karnataka should Uh, try to do more intensively trying to link it with the nrlm or srlm sanjeevni etc going forward and that can be a big boost in uh, uh, creating more awareness within the sg networks and trying to bring in more uh, uh, women into the work sites uh, secondly has been in terms of induction of women maids another example that we touched upon in the previous slide as well uh, the participation or the presence of women maids were found to be extremely low uh, within all the districts that we worked with Uh, so that is something which needs to have further impetus if we can have more women uh, more women uh, maids at least if there can be a rule where at least every panchayat should have 5 to 10 uh, women maids or uh, that could be something which can be greatly helpful uh, now one uh, is about induction of more women maids but it is also important that their capacity be built uh like i mentioned most of the maids even uh, irrespective of their gender were not aware about what their uh, roles and responsibilities are so i think going forward there needs to be concerted effort to make sure capacity is being built and uh, and finally incentivizing as well because they continue to earn as much as uh, a, a, a regular worker would earn so now it's also important given that they have additional responsibilities how can we incentivize uh, them more so that they are more motivated to take up greater responsibilities um so one of the observation that we had uh, was we wanted to find out uh, if there was any awareness uh, on labor cards um states like rajasthan for example uh, especially in the la in the last year were able was able to facilitate um, issue of um, labor cards by the labor department to uh, workers who have con completed 90 days or more of work uh, in nrg uh, while this is also applicable in karnataka most women uh, did not know about it and um, some of the women who did have an idea of uh, you know um, they call themselves registered workers was because you know their, their husbands might have had that card um, uh, as a result of uh, the work that they're doing in the uh, labor market now this is especially important uh, 
for uh, women. And uh, one of the ways in which we can incentivize more women to participate is uh, by getting them to register themselves as uh, construction workers in um, BOCW, which is the Board of Construction Workers, because it opens up and they become entitled to a host of social security uh, policies, uh, welfare ben maternity welfare benefits, accident insurance, medical insurance. Uh, they have scholarships uh, for their children, uh, money that is provided when you know their family member, one of their family members gets married, etc. So um, uh, we when we did try and explain to them that you know these are these are the things that would you know become available um, if you were to register and would that be of interest? And a lot of women seem to indicate that um, you know uh, if for the work that we are already doing, uh, we get equal wages uh, and also we don't have to step outside of the house uh, and therefore something like this will be a definite uh, you know uh, like an additional sort of uh, incentive for us to go out and demand that work uh, in the uh, in the villages that we uh, live um, so uh, the suggestion uh, that we want to work with the, to the department and how we could sort of su support them is to identify how we can facilitate this convergence between DOCW uh, part of the labor department and the NREG um, commissionerate which is part of the PR and RD it could be through labor camps it could be through nudging messages uh, sort of facilitating access to these portals where they can register uh, etc so that was certainly a, um, an opportunity that we want to, you know, uh, learn uh, more deeply about um, through, you know, the coming months. Second was uh, women-friendly uh, work. We realized that there was a lot of hesitation that women showed uh, because of the nature of work that gets allocated as well. So if uh, through, you know, it might be very specific to the area that they're living in. It could be hard soil, soft soil. Um, it could be the kind of work that is, you know, that uh, the panchayat has sort of uh, uh, created in the annual plan. But uh, what we did realize uh, was if there there was a way in which we could advertise the kind of uh, women-friendly work that can that women sort of generally usually prefer. Uh, so in some of the conversations, we realized that women prefer individual assets, right? Individual house, whether it is creating cow sheds, uh, soak pits, or bachal gundis, as they say, um, uh, horticulture, etc., was preferred over say uh, tilling in hot so uh, hard soil or creating trenches, um, etc. So if there's a way in which we can create a dashboard and make it publicly available that this is the nature of uh, work, and if there's any way we can highlight what the, and what part of that constitute like women friendly work i think there will be more sort of um, uh, need that women can you know access uh, uh, more work in their uh, villages and lastly there is an opportunity that presents uh, uh, for uh, using uh, these women uh, you know dovetailing some of the efforts with uh, NR, SRLM and providing some sort of skills and not just in building infrastructure but also as service providers now given uh, covid vaccine rollout etc there, there there definitely presents an opportunity where they can their services can be used uh, to amplify the uh, you know the presence of asha sisters or uh, anganwadi teachers and to sort of act as the last mile uh, uh, delivery agents for welfare or you know for continued sort of investment in nutrition health etc in those villages so these were some of the opportunities that uh, we were able to find out uh, through our discussions and um, these are very preliminary and we're trying to sort of dig deeper talk to uh, you know the officers um, and uh, people on the ground and we we'll, you know be happy to you know uh, uh, learn about some ideas or some thoughts and even maybe take questions uh, at this point uh, so that brings us to the end of our presentation thank you very much I was thinking that maybe uh, Rajatan, you know, you were kind of you kind of ended on the note that you said that this is pretty preliminary and you're hoping to kind of go back and unpack further. Uh, maybe what might be interesting is how you could maybe share with us what your um, second sprint or your second round is turning out to be. Like, what are the things you want to press down on further? Have you been able to identify um, different trends that you've been able to map uh, and see if there's anything else that comes up? And I guess I just wanted to also understand out of curiosity, uh, will you be doing this now virtually or because I guess we're now and almost back to square one, how how would you be actually carrying out this research and what has that process looked like? Because from the pictures you shared, it looked like you were doing those um, in person. Uh, so just, yeah, just curious to see how maybe round two looks like for you. Sure. Uh, so we ended this, um, you know, the, the actual uh, physical sort of interviews uh, end of March, and we're not doing that from April, which is why we're still calling this preliminary. Uh, so the idea is, you know, to take some of these observations um, to the commissioner uh, to, you know, uh, talk to other partners in the ecosystem and see if there are some uh, areas of mutual interest that we can further uh, deliberate on um, either through, you know, phone surveys or maybe stalling it till we can actually go on field. Uh, we have not fully thought that through. Uh, for now, uh, we do know that we want to go back to these people and talk uh, in greater depth um, but how we're going to do that uh, we haven't uh, fully thought about that at this point uh, Nadia. 
Okay, fair enough. I think, yeah, I think at, at this point, we can't really predict what any of our work in the next week itself yeah. uh, will look like. But yeah, that's, uh, that's fair. So could you just remind me what your sample size uh, looked like when you were doing the qualitative interviews? I, I, I think I yeah. missed that. Yeah. So we spoke to about 213 women across all of these uh, four districts. Great. That's, yeah, that's quite a, quite a good sample size. Uh, hello, Rachita and Mina Joseph. Thank you so much for your, uh, you know, very insightful uh, session. My question is not very specific to uh, women who are working in Managra, but you know, given that there is reservation for women to be panjayat head, uh, like where, where any of your GPs that you studied had, uh, you know, women panjayat head, and that influencing or impacting, uh, you know, participation of women in the Gram Sabha in any way. Yeah, so that was a hypothesis that we also had in mind, like if having, you know, front facing women leaders sort of elicit more um, involvement and participation, none of the ones that we went to, unfortunately, had, uh, you know, uh, you know, had met that criteria. And uh, therefore, we can't really comment. But some of the initial discussions that we had, right, like prior to this actual research study, the work that we did in Bagal Code, uh, where we realized that that's not so much of a constraint. Like uh, I've heard, I mean, uh, these are all, of course, anecdotes that are shared. But it was not so much of a known entity uh, that we realized through those conversations. Uh, somebody. Thank you, uh, Radhita and Minu. And maybe I'll just take about great. Uh, so thank you, everyone, for joining us uh, today. And of, of course, especially thank you to Minu and Radhita for sharing such interesting and exciting work that we've been doing. Um, do join us for the rest of the plenaries, showcase, and dialogues that are yet to come uh, today as well as tomorrow. Uh, later at 4 p.m., we have a plenary on gendered economic impacts, which is being co-anchored by LEAD, SEVA, and IOH. And tomorrow, we have uh, many exciting sessions. We have a session on vaccine hesitancy and misinformation, a session on the review of the budgetary trends in the arts and culture section, and a session that uh, will be unpacking insights from the implementation of the take home ration program uh, during COVID-19, among many other uh, dialogues and showcases that we are yet to have. Uh, but we'd also like to mention that if, due to a few unforeseen circumstances, we've had to um, reschedule a few uh, sessions which will now be held on the 7th of May. Uh, we have of course updated all those all that all the relevant information on shed so do have a look at that and keep that sort of in mind while you uh, do plan the day so you can know when exactly the session is. Um, of course feel free to uh, send us an email at hello at cornet.in if you think the community is exciting and you'd like to be involved and follow us of course on Twitter at cornet underscore India and check out you can check out all the projects that have been uploaded uh, the 80 plus projects I was talking about in the introduction on www.cornet.in. Um, thank you so much for joining us and everyone uh, stay safe and take care.